Over the course of the Star Wars timeline, we've seen many, many wars, both in Legends and Canon. And with these wars has come many weapons of mass destruction. Some were pretty terrifying and intimidating, while others were strange in both appearance and functionality. In this video, we'll be taking a look at the top 7 Star Wars tanks that you've never heard of. Starting at number 7, we have the Wookiee Battle Scythe. This tank was developed by the Wookiees to be an armoured transport and assault vehicle. Just like how siege rams of ancient times were used to break into towns and fortresses, the Battle Scythe was used by the Wookiees to break into enemy formations, fortifications or severely damage other vehicles. It had immensely thick armour and was triangular shaped, with a heavy plough on the front for extra punching power. The Scythe was able to withstand continuous fire even from some of the Empire's largest guns. Once it had broken through a defence or disabled another vehicle, the 15 heavily armed Wookiees that rode within the Scythe would dismount and fight to secure a breachhead or take an important objective. The Scythe itself had three heavy blaster cannons on the turrets and could pick a fight with most lightly armoured or transport vehicles. Its thick armour, however, had a downside, as it was slow and cumbersome due to the weight and thickness of the plating. This meant it was vulnerable to lighter, more manoeuvrable attack craft, and if surrounded, could be easily destroyed or immobilised. Coming in at number 6, we have the Tank Droid Mark IV. This autonomous tank, featured in the Jedi Civil War, was armed with a plethora of different weaponry, including a rocket launcher, grenade launcher, blaster cannons and even a flamethrower. Little is known about these tanks, but they were supposedly programmed to guard military bases from attack. It manoeuvred using two large legs, but was pretty clunky and therefore very cumbersome. Due to its large size and slow movement, it was ineffective against the silent and stealthy Jedi. At number 5, we have the MZ-8 Mobile Pulse Cannon, otherwise known as the Plasma Tank. This tank is probably more recognisable in today's world, with similar features to prototype tank destroyers such as the T-28 Super Heavy Tank. Its low elevation would have allowed it to be concealed easily, whilst being harder to hit with returning fire. During the Galactic Civil War, this tank was used by Tai Bazan to great effect, and in larger numbers, could even damage the heavily armoured 8080 walkers. However, due to its slow mobility, it was vulnerable to infantry and had to be supported if it was going to be effective. Crews were even known to self-destruct the plasma in the tank, thus causing immense damage as a last resort. Coming in at number 4, we have the Bog Behemoth. Probably the biggest land tank ever created in Star Wars, the Bog Behemoth was created for the Separatists during the Clone Wars. Although never featured in the animated series, it did briefly feature in a Star Wars The Clone Wars comic. What we know of the tank from the one confirmed image we have of it is that it was a land crawler, and was probably used to cleave a path of destruction with its triangular plow on its front. We do not know what weapons it featured, or how big it was in comparison to other vehicles. However, this is what we know of the tank from Obi-Wan. The Council has advised caution, and when dealing with a new breed of land tank, especially one of this magnitude, I have a good reason to concur. However, the Bog Behemoth never saw action that we know of, possibly because it was destroyed when Anakin and Obi-Wan captured the landship and obliterated it. Coming in at number 3, we have the XR-85. The XR-85 was another autonomous droid tank and was used by the Galactic Empire during their fight against the Rebellion, both pre and post the Battle of Endor. It featured a heavy particle cannon, two forward light turbo lasers, four twin heavy repeating blasters and one Golan Arms DF-9 laser cannon. Unlike the tank droid Mark IV, it was highly effective and was basically a heavy multiple weapon support platform. Around the time of Grand Admiral Thrawn, later additions were produced, which were apparently the size of 8080s. After the Battle of Endor, the Galactic Empire would use these tanks to compensate for the lack of manpower and experience of its tank crews, as many of them had been either killed, captured, or were not able to be trained. Using the XR-85's complex and intuitive brain, the Empire was able to still feel considerable power and might on the battlefield, despite its manpower issues. And at number 2, we have the Scythe Harvester. 
probably the coolest tank on this list, the Scythe Harvester was one that I just had to include. Built by the Separatists to fight against the clone armies, the Harvester was a unique vehicle and was probably developed off the success of the multi-troop transport that we see in the Battle of Theed in The Phantom Menace. Huge in size and able to transport battle droids into the thick of the battle, the Harvester was well armoured and also featured a significant array of weapons, including one that may surprise you. On top of the tank was a turret, which is similar to those of the later built AT-AT, and was fitted with four laser cannons with two more attached to the side of the tank. Its biggest and most terrifying weapon though was the huge laser scythe, attached to a flexible arm, almost as if the tank itself had a lightsaber. When facing these tanks on one of the moons of Kashyyyk, the clone commander underestimated the capability of these tanks. After his gunships were destroyed by the Harvester's huge laser scythe as they flew low overhead, it was only thanks to Grandmaster Yoda that the battle was won. Yoda managed to commandeer one of the Harvesters and turned it on the other, destroying both in the process. One can only conclude that if the Separatists managed to build and use more of the Harvesters in combat, they would have had a big impact on the many battles fought in the Clone Wars. Before we get to number one, we have an honourable mention, the Impeding Assault Tank. In my opinion, this is probably the weirdest tank, even though by most definitions it is probably not a tank. I would class it more as a robotic machine, because it was designed to crawl like a centipede underground and then come up to attack its enemies. The 501st Legion faced these machines on Umbara and they inflicted heavy casualties on the clones. Although probably not a tank, it gets an honourable mention for being the most unique combat vehicle and one of my favourites from the Clone Wars. And finally, for number one, we have the TIE Crawler. If I saw the TIE Crawler on a drawing board, I would probably assume it was either a joke or a computer error. Whoever thought to take the TIE Fighter cabin and whack on two tracks either side is either a genius or a complete idiot. On the one hand, this is a terrible idea for a tank, with little to no armour on the cabin, so not really ideally suited for heavy weapon combat. But then again, neither was the TIE Fighter. On the other hand, having the ability to recycle old or damaged TIE Fighters and turn them into tracked vehicles saved the Empire precious materials, which in my opinion is a pretty genius move. Especially because the TIE Crawler was a patrolling or guard tank and supposedly would not come up against any heavily armed opposition. Its maneuverability made it ideal for this role, overcoming difficult terrain and chasing opponents with its high top speed. It was equipped with the same twin laser cannons found on the airborne fighter, which gave it a lot of versatility. It is, however, very strange to look at, and I'm sure a rebel could easily mistake it for a wreck type fighter, only to be given the surprise of their life as it starts moving towards them. Anyway, that's all I have for today, guys. If you want to learn more about Star Wars vehicles and ships, then let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching, and as always, may the Force be with you.